to PEQ or not to PEQ before you run Odyssey or a room correction software? That is the question that I'm asking in this video. What's up guys, this is Magnolia Mo and welcome back to my channel. To PEQ or not to PEQ, right, is basically the topic of discussion here. So over the last few months, I've added a number of bass straps uh, in, in this room. I've added more acoustic panels in this room and I wanted to rerun Odyssey because I know, you know, things would have changed by, uh, by just, you know, adding bass straps and, and more acoustic panels, right? So, but before I, I reran uh, Odyssey, I wanted to actually check um, if I needed to, again, you know, tinker with the parametric EQ on the two subs, right? And obviously the answer is yes, I, I needed to because the SB16 Ultra, when I hooked up my Omni mic, uh, did not need that much correction, o only in a f you know uh, only in a few frequencies, right? But the SB3000 needed a little bit more help to flatten that curve, uh, not completely flatten it, but you know what I mean, right? So 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 I, I started to do that, but as I was you know going through this, um, I was coming to a realization and I'm and I'm going down a path that I don't necessarily want to go down right and this is where I need your help and your feedback uh, and and essentially you know advice on on what actually should I do after I've gone through the PEQ uh, I've gone through the face correction then I've reran Odyssey and then I also ran Odyssey without PEQ and any of the phase correction. Just plain, just let the subwoofers be the way they are and just run Odyssey, right? So the results that I came up with, I'm going to share those in just a minute. And uh, and that's really what's uh, driving me a little crazy here, right? So let's uh, let's start. Uh, and uh, we'll start with uh, the SB3000 and then we'll move on to the SB16 and you'll see me go through the parametric EQ. Now I'm not gonna uh, share how the sauce was made, right? Like because I'm not gonna sit here and then uh, show you the different frequencies that, that I started adjusting and the trim levels or the boosts or where I was cutting because it, it does take a while and this video would be long. So 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 I, I essentially landed on, uh, you know, it's a it's the parametric EQ is is has three different uh, uh, bands right that I can make corrections to so I landed on on those three bands that I need to make corrections to um, and that's what I'm going to share without actually going through okay if I'm adjusting this frequency this is what's happening in you know to the rest of the curve you know this is basically the end result of that whole process all right so let's get on with it all right guys we're gonna start with the sb3000 so you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the 53 hertz um, frequency here so at about 52 hertz is what i decided to target i'll turn the peq on as you can see it brought that up um <clears throat> considerably and then you're gonna go to the 70 hertz tone uh, 70 hertz frequency because now you have a bump there so we're gonna cut that frequent uh, you know that frequency down so it's a gradual slope now we are left with about 40 hertz where you have that peak right so now you see a gradual uh, frequency response without any of the bumps and uh, you know peaks and valleys right uh, I'm not worried about this uh, this dip right here only because uh, I think I can fix that with the SB16 Ultra all right so let's now switch over to the SB16 so I'm gonna actually uh, take the SB3000 take the volume all the way down switch over to SB16 so what you see here is a big drop around 
59, you know, 59, about 60, 60 hertz or so. Okay, so you have this big drop off and that's what we want to adjust. So starting with the 60 hertz frequency, we're going to boost that. And there you go. That big drop went away. You got the 73 hertz uh, frequency where now you have a big uh, not a big but about five seven about seven db bump right so we're gonna cut that output down a little bit and there you go now you have a gradual slope over here 100 hertz is about it's around well oops i can't get it to, okay 100 hertz is about 74.2 dbs right so that is something that i want to fix because i want to boost that a little bit but I don't know if boosting is actually a good thing. So I cut that uh, by minus 4 dB to, to have a gradual slope. Now that didn't really work out, didn't do anything. So what if I increased it, right? And if I increase the, it, the output, I think it's good, but it just starts to behave very erratically. So I'm gonna just bring it down to about minus 3.1. Okay, uh, so I'm going to leave it right there. This is basically where you have the SP16. Now I'm going to go back to the SP3000. Engage that. And there you go. You have a very nice... So with your SB3000 uh, engaged, right? All levels engaged. SB16, all PEQ engaged, <clears throat> even the 100 hertz is, is, is between 75 and 80 uh, dBs and then your high frequency, you know, your low frequency starting with 40 to 20 hertz, they're pretty good. I mean, that's how I want it. Uh, and, and now I'm going to run the Odyssey and then we go from there. All right, so this is the, the end result right here, right? So the red curve is the, is the plain Odyssey uh, RAND curve, right? So where I ran the Odyssey without uh, any PEQ or phase correction. And then the yellow curve is, the, is both the, the subwoofers, the dual uh, SVSs, uh, with just the parametric EQ and the phase correction. And then the blue curve is running Odyssey on top of the PEQ and phase correction. And as you can see basically that in here that, that the, the plain vanilla Odyssey curve, right, that, that I ran uh, is, uh, <clears throat> is pretty good from a base response standpoint, you know, except for that one dip uh, between 55 and uh, between actually 50 hertz to about uh, 70 hertz. And, uh, and, and then the, the blue curve uh, is where I ran Odyssey all the way through after running the PEQ and phase correction. And then the yellow one is no Odyssey, just PEQ and phase. That one, the yellow seems to be the most balanced uh, of all of the other curves in here, right? So of all, all, of all the three curves, right? So I almost prefer the yellow one, <clears throat> but I do want to try out the, the plain vanilla Odyssey curve, right? Because I want to see how that sounds given I mean there is a dip there is a gap there but but at the end of the day uh, you know I want to see how that that sounds gonna pan out because it does go uh, about 2 dBs uh, lower it goes to about you know it starts to kind of drop off after 12 Hertz versus the 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 PEQ and face corrected curve which and, and then the the yellow curve which is your Odyssey on top of the PEQ and and face corrected for uh, curve right those drop off after f about 14 Hertz or so uh, so I do get uh, deeper uh, ba base response right with uh, just the Odyssey curve but then there is that that dip right um, between 50 and 70 Hertz right it's not a big dip it's about 70 B's um, could be considered a lot, uh, but uh, not more than 10 dBs, right? So, so I want to, I do want to try that out. But that's really where <laughs> my mind is going here, right? So it's, it's leading me down this path where I don't know what the benefit is of running the PEQ and then uh, uh, 
and then running Odyssey on top of that because as you can, as you see the blue curve uh, you know here it's uh, it, it, it actually I'm losing quite a bit of output I'm losing between 85 so from it I'm losing 10 DB output between uh, 25 Hertz and um, and about 52 Hertz right so I'm so I'm losing quite a bit of output in that main uh, area where you I know the subwoofers you know are, are most active right between 20 and 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 50 Hertz right so because that's audible you can listen to at least 30 40 and 50, and 50 Hertz uh, sounds right so 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 I'm losing that you know that audible output so you know by running the PEQ and then running Odyssey which is the the oddity in here which is basically a a um, I don't know if this is an anomaly or if if that's how things work it's EQ on top of EQ right uh, where it's kind of ruining the overall you know purpose of Odyssey uh, I'm not sure but what I do want to do is try this out. Uh, try out just the Odyssey, uh, plain vanilla Odyssey corrected subwoofer curve or setting um, and, and see how this sounds is going to sound and see how this pans out because I'm pretty sure I'm going to actually like it because I'm going to hear more in that 20 to 50 hertz uh, range. So. So that's basically it. I mean, this is a long, uh, long drawn out way of saying, uh, you know, my last video that I did uh, about benefits of PEQ and then running Odyssey, which I preferred now seems to be, uh, you know, flipped with with these particular readings and with these particular curves. So I'd love to hear your feedback. And as usual, if uh, you like this video, please uh, like, share and subscribe if you're not subscribed to my channel. And I thank you to my subscribers for hanging in there with me. So until next time.